Hello, everybody. Hello and welcome, everyone. This is the Brewery Art Walk live virtual tour. I'm going to flip the camera around so you can see who the camera person is real quick. Hi, everyone. My name is Kevin Flint. I'm an artist here at the Brewery Art Colony. Lived here myself about 15 years. Uh, I also run a little company called LA Art Tours, and we're doing a live virtual version of the Art Walk today. Uh, this is a challenge we just had to roll with. You know, we've been doing the art walk here at the brewery for over 30 years. People have been walking these. We get, you know, 10, 20,000 people visit sometimes for a weekend for art walk. Well, that all changed, of course. So we're trying something new. You got to bear with us. There's a few little challenges. Uh, sometimes the audio isn't that good. So we're going to have the artists speak as loud as they can, but we can't guarantee it's always going to be perfect. Um, and also, so we basically are in these giant concrete buildings, blocks of concrete, no cell phone signals. So we're on Wi-Fi, but of course every artist has a different Wi-Fi router. So we hop from Wi-Fi to Wi-Fi and occasionally hop in Wi-Fi, we might lose a connection. So just bear with us. Uh, we're gonna be actually taking you in the lofts of all these awesome artists, seeing their work, seeing what they do, uh, seeing who they are. Remember, they live in these spaces. Uh, it's the world's largest art colony. 550 artists live here. So it's gonna be a really awesome time. We're gonna take you to see about 20 of them on my tour here. Um, and I'll tell you a little history about the brewery and a little bit about it as you walk around. So I'm going to flip the camera back around here so you don't have to see me again. And we're going to go visit our first artist. Our first artist today is Joshua Elias. And this is Joshua's front door. Hey, Joshua. All right. Remember, speak real loud, Joshua. <laughs> Welcome to my art studio. Uh, I'm Joshua Elias. I've been Painting here, dropping my LA Dodgers cap. It's precious these days. Um, I've been here since 1999, and I love this studio. I love the brewery, and thanks for visiting, even virtually. I've probably done, I don't know how many art walks is ridiculous. <laughs> probably, it, it definitely in at least 18. So um, usually, I have a. So we're trying to do it virtually. Thanks for, for flowing with it. And um, there you go. Okay, so this is my studio. And um, first I to show you, um, things are in the works. This is not complete, but close. Same with this painting down here. This is the top the bottom of this work. And it's, um, I'm working, really going in deep with color these days. Um, and really trying to lift things up. Um, Emotionally, spiritually, you know, just the, the whole vibration right now is is difficult time. It's very tenuous uh, in America and we're in LA. We're just trying to get things up here. And I always have kind of with my work, um, but I've really taken it. I'm also kind of subdued <laughs> these days. So I'm using really bright colors. And then also, this is called the Ghost of Spamoni. I don't know how the colors are showing up there, but there's a lot of subtleties here. It's almost like ghosted colors and spumoni kind of colors, which um, personally, uh, I like the colors. I never was a fan of the idea of spumoni, but uh, you guys can weigh in on that. Um, all right, these are all brand new words. Over the last, uh, I would say, I don't know, seven or eight months during this pandemic period, um, I've done 20 hours. I've been quite busy and very inspired. And artists were all locked down in a way. <laughs> you know, and, and certainly painters. And I'm an oil painter. Here's some real briefly. Uh, I work with. Um, with an easel sometimes, and then also flat, as you notice. But uh, these are some of the paints. I actually know where every one of these are <laughs> and what they are exactly. Um, this is palette, which is, interests me as an example right now. I keep things like this, like this color that's not painted is an interesting color to me, a kind of non-color that kind of soften things down. So, um, Joshua, you make some of your own paints as well, right? I do. I do. I haven't been doing that as much, but these are. For example, this is pure pigment. This comes from Germany. And I I grind them up with a glass Mueller. I don't have it readily available right now, but on a 
some marble slabs that a collector of mine had given me and um and i grind it up with linseed oil and i do make it. um but when i work larger it's hard to to, to it's a lot of paint to make it's physical uh in fact a lot of the work i do is very physical um this is called candy also in the idea of spumoni a kind of idea of a a sweetness, a sweetness, yeah. Did, did you want to ask me something? Sorry, oh, okay. Was that about two or three months ago? About two months ago. Now I'm blending a lot more than I ever have, um, very softly, and working with brushes, very, very, a lot of feathering and a lot of blending of a kind of unity of color. I've been thinking. A lot about that got a lot of great comments people coming in uh posting how much they love your stuff so far a lot of comments coming in. thank you all <laughs> thank you that's, that's greatly appreciated just so you guess now we have people from all over the world on this tour right now uh tons of people are on this so feel free to ask questions in the, the chat there they pop up <laughs> they, they pop up uh, so yeah and i see the questions pop up flying by and sometimes i don't get to them but i'm gonna try yeah the... it's about taking things to a new level i used to have cats and cats could be relaxed and then they even get more relaxed and more calm it's like how did you do that I think as humans, that would be a good thing for us to know. Yeah. And so I think color can lead us to it. And I think this painting is very, very cool. We have a question. What's the usual size of your work? Okay. I like the number nine. So like an example, I did several of these. This 54 was nine by 63. That's a typical size. Another one is 54 high, this one, and 45 wide. Um, Three new ones I'm working on are 57 high by 55. So those are big paintings. Of course, some, it depends where you're at, they're not considered big, but um, um, I do some smaller pieces occasionally. You know, that's 24 by 24. The one on the very top is an older work that I worked on for over 10 years um, on and off. And it's also equals nine, it's 18 inches high by 90 inches width. And as I told people earlier, remember these are, it, it looks like a studio or a gallery or workspace only, but these are also living spaces. So you see the stairs there. That goes up to uh, yeah, Josh's little there. world up there. Yeah. There's, believe it or not, there's a kitchen up there, there's a bathroom, bedroom, all that stuff up those stairs. Yeah, he's got his jacuzzi up there. His, the maid's quarters are up there. There's some information if anyone wants to reach me. Focus. And we'll stop on your door sign outside too. I don't know how well that came in focus, but we'll stop at your door sign as well. And anyone can reach out to me. You know, I, I actually do answer people. So email me. Instagram is really good to see where my new works are. Um, you know, I'm not really active on that. But I can answer any question that you have. A lot of that work has been, been sold. And um, this is it. I love the paint and I love that you're, you're part of that. So thank you. Thanks for having us, Joshua. Thanks for letting us visit. And yeah, everyone, all the information, if you're trying to follow along and you don't hear the artist's name, you can always check the website for the Brewery Art Association. We have all the artist's links up there, all their names. We try to have in the order we're seeing them today up there as well for whatever time you're at. I'm going to spin around here. Let you zoom in again on Josh to the virus. All right. Oops, and of course, the wind hit right then. So again, we're in this building right now, coming to you live. Uh, we're going to go to the next studio, which lucky for me is all of about eight feet away there. I am going to switch to a different Wi-Fi signal. Like I said, we're going to be doing these switches and occasionally things will stop up a little while we're switching. So you just got to bear with us while we have to do our little uh, switches. So give me a sec while I try to switch this one.
Not yet. Give me a sec, sir. Let me try again. Oops, I forgot about your password. What's your password? Oh. Sorry, folks, if you're not hearing us right now. See if we got a signal. Connecting, connecting, connecting. Just having trouble with yours. I'm going to connect back in with Josh's. Okay, sorry. All right. Hey, folks, sorry about that. Like I said, we bounced between these different Wi Fi's. I'm here in Bruce Dean's kitchen. I'm going to spin you around and he's going to. There we go. Hey, Bruce. Welcome. Welcome back, Kevin. How are you? I'm doing good. Tired. I've been walking upstairs all day. So. <laughs> all right. Let's hear what you got, Bruce. So my wife Susan and I live and work here. Uh, we also have a cat that lives here but doesn't work here at all. Uh, I began my career 45 years ago after getting art school uh, as an illustrator. Uh, I'm going to show you some of my drawings first since that relates to what I was doing in the beginning of my career. Uh, they're all over here. So Susan gives me assignments. And one time she gave me an assignment of authors. So these are some of the authors I've done. I've done over 60 author portraits. There's still probably some of the originals left. These are mostly prints. Uh, it's a fun way for me to practice drawing. I also get commissions doing somebody's kids or their pets or uh, perhaps their parents in some old photo. Uh, I also have some of my old portraits here as prints. I did a series for The Great Gatsby at one time. Uh, this was for uh, the Great Books series uh, of The Great Gatsby. It was fun to revisit these for me. Uh, we talked earlier, but I want to tell you again about my project with my son, Tyler. Uh, he's an English professor and a writer, and he suggested that we do a series of uh, bestiary prints. These are all uh, creatures, mythological creatures. And so he will give me the idea of what to start drawing and he will write about it. And then uh, we're gonna make this into a book at some point, so. Alyssa says hello. Tell her hi. Ravenwood, old neighbor. <laughs> That's great. Um, these were really fun to do, actually, and I'm looking forward to the time when it's a book. Uh, when the pandemic started, I started in the Etsy shop, so these prints are all for sale at the Etsy shop. Among the most popular items are the bird prints. Uh, so I made cards of the bird prints. We have all kinds of birds here. Um, they were really fun to do. This is relaxing for me to do in my draw. Uh, however, mostly, I'm a painter. I've been a painter for many years. Even though I was an illustrator, my very first solo show uh, was abstract paintings. And almost all of my shows since then have been abstract paintings. Uh, you can see a couple over here on the wall. There's three here. Jake and Kristen say hi as well. Tell yeah, them hi. Tell them hi. <laughs> or I'll say hi. Hi, Jake and Kristen. We miss you guys. Um, four years ago, my daughter moved to Rome. So when we moved to Rome, my wife and I took our first trip to Europe. We've been back a few times since then. Uh, it completely changed my work. We went to visit the galleries, the cathedrals, the museums in Rome and Paris, not just Rome, but all of Italy and Paris. And I came back and started doing figurative work, which was painful. The drawings are fun to do, they're relaxing. Uh, the paintings are daunting. Uh, I never know how they're gonna turn out. Uh, I came back doing figurative work. Here's an example of one of the pieces that I did when I first came back. Um, I wasn't sure what my point was. Uh, why was I doing something that had been done so well for hundreds of years? Um, I sometimes learn from the people that visit the studio. They'll talk about my pieces and I'll, I might use what they tell me in my next speech about these paintings. Uh, I did three figurative pieces and then I began doing interiors. So some of the interiors are here. You see up here was the first one, the first staircase. 
These staircases came after. These are more recent. These are all done this year. Uh, they incorporate some of the abstract elements that I used to be used to use in my paintings as well. So now we're looking at my wife's work table, which is the most popular thing in the studio. Whenever anybody comes for Art Walk, uh, they'll take pictures of her work table first. And I'll say, what about my work? Why don't you look at this room? So. We have another staircase painting over here in the living room. We carried it all the way from the studio to the living room, hung it up here to see what it looks like with, with things around it. All 10 feet? All 10 mm -hmm. feet, exactly. Uh, the staircases I always think of as, as the empty spaces somehow inspiring thought or inspiring uh, creative thought. Um, I think about what might have happened before they, this moment existed, what might have happened after, what's around the corner what's on the next level, that kind of thing. Uh, I don't tell stories with my paintings as much as I start a conversation. I think of my, uh, the people that view my paintings as finishing the conversation, as having ideas about what happens next. I have some more, more things over here. This painting also happened this year. This is the largest of the paintings that incorporates both the abstract elements uh, and the realistic elements. Now the most recent paintings, the last two were actually abstracts. Uh, I find myself going back and forth and I, I'm pleased with that ability to go back and forth. Uh, I do find now the abstracts are easier. The idea of painting light space and creating something that's solid while making it interesting in terms of marks is hard, um, but I'll get used to it. It'll be okay. Uh, do you wanna see the uh, okay. markers? Great. So I also do digital prints. Uh, these places don't exist. They are all realistic textures. I, I take pictures of things like tree bark or pieces of wood or concrete, and then I make them into scenes at night. Uh, I was saying earlier that you can see the wood from this particular garage is the same wood that's in this house down here. Uh, I tell people that I'm a contractor, it's not at all true. But uh, uh, I didn't draw the tile, I used tile that I found online. But the place itself is is all made up. It's all fiction. So I really enjoy people come to my studio. Uh, I, I miss the art walk. Uh, when you bring your LA art tours here, it's really a, a high point of our month usually. Uh, I look forward to talking to people about what I'm doing. Uh, they tell me things about my art that I didn't understand previously in some instances. Uh, I want to thank LA Art Tours and the Brewery Art Walk for, for doing this virtual art walk. Well, thanks for letting us into your place here. I'm going to do a quick walk around so everyone can get an idea. Like I said, and I've tried to emphasize, these are their houses and their galleries and their studios and everything else. So, and Bruce has one of the most homey sort of places that we'll ever see on these tours. Uh, my own loft isn't included this time, but mine is like literally the exact, couldn't be more opposite Bruce's. Mine looks like some post-apocalyptic nightmare of a bomb shelter, and yours is this such a homey feel for being in a, literally a concrete box. I mean, this is a concrete box, and you turn it. <laughs> but yeah, so I mean, your place looks like it'd be a little wood house or something like that, and it's a, literally a concrete box we're in right now. But <laughs> all right, Bruce, thanks so much for letting us stop by. All right. all right, we're heading in there and heading next to us now. Do you another, uh, you know, bear with me if we lose the service for a minute. Let me, uh, what's the next one here? All right, folks, I think you're back with us. This is our next stop here at St. Bernstein, and now we are at the Jesus Wall. Okay, and here we go. Hi, welcome to the Jesus Wall, which is actually a studio. That's my husband, Kevin Wright, and he's a photographer. And what he does is that he takes pictures, and um, he had these books that um, 
he published for like LA City. So he has this uh, book, Bridges of Downtown Los Angeles. And uh, this had his friends and he got the idea of uh, making these books uh, because uh, he was shooting these uh, bridges in the LA River. And most of these pictures, like I was going with him in photo shoots. And that's how I kind of, uh, yeah, I met him like that. <laughs> and um, we'll show you around our that's the six feet bridge, and uh, it doesn't exist anymore. Uh, or there's like three buildings right now. Like, I think see, there's two shadows like one is me and one is seven. And Jesus, we've got all the Jesuses. Come on down, all the Jesus. I mean, here we have the custom painted walls by Celeste Cortez from Evil Rock. It's the blue wall and the gray wall. I, I adore them. They were expensive. I'm going to keep them for a while. Around to your left is the star wall. Also, the LED Christmas light. And to your right, oh. We also have a herd of bathtubs such as to your left. People come here sometimes just to fill the bathtubs. Would you like to show them your sound booth? Yeah, so like when Shannon published his, well, when he started making these books, which I kind of helped him, um, he started it, uh, publishing them on Blurb for LA City, and then he did this one. So I fell in love with like uh, looking for the reality of things. So I wanted to get involved in like production. So like during the pandemic, so we built this sound booth. Well, um, I just basically went to uh, Home Depot and got all the materials there. It cost maybe like less than $200. So I started like narrating books because there was nothing else to do here like uh, we were not allowed to have photo shoots or even like go outside so um i started narrating so like um yeah like eventually like i wanted to incorporate uh, kevin's photography into maybe perhaps creating like small films like uh, i started shooting like small documentaries um because i always see his photography around and he has a studio and uh, so now we're playing with uh, photos and sound to put them together and make a story and uh, make sound, like start small, like start shooting like a small film about something. Because everything starts from photography and even the documentary basically just looks for that reality in photography. And it all started with a Kevin's photography, well, basically his studio. Great. Well, thank you guys for letting us pop on in here. I know you guys got a shoot going on, so I want to interrupt those guys. Uh, um, everyone, again, this is Anna and Kevin. This is the Jesus Wall Studio. And again, there's links to everything on the Brewery Art Walk uh, website. So you'll be able to get links to what they're doing and what's going on here. So thanks again, guys, for letting us come on in. Got a room where we're going next. And we are in a concrete box again. So I guarantee you we're going to go in and out here as we lose the Wi Fi. But uh, we're going to do our best again, folks. So bear with us.
Okay, folks, I think you're back with me with the connection. I stepped outside just to make sure we're all connected again. And look what we see, a nice view here from one of the balconies. As we walk around, I'm going to give you guys a lot of history about the brewery, about the brewery art colony, history about what happened here, why it's here, all those sort of things. Um, you see up there, that's Chavez Ravine where the Dodgers play. So uh, for all you L.A. people, go Dodgers. For all us uh, Bay Area people, boo Dodgers. But hey, that's the way it goes. Uh, there's the UPS Depot. And then there's some of the rest of the brewery. We're going to go see the top floor later on. I'll give you a much better view of this from up there. But first, we're going to go see our next artist here. And see Doris. Knock, knock. Yep. You guys speak nice and loud. And Christian Jewish. You can kind of have this is how it turned out. <laughs> so um, my work is largely over here and I've seen patterns that come from various cultures. And uh, I'm trying to tell a story about them. So a lot of these patterns I've been up in the Arab world. This is a mushroom begin design made out of wood spindles and the drawing of it and cut out of it kind of transitions from depiction, illustration to more conceptual idea. And these, this is a pattern from China that was twisted and turned on its side in India. And then it went to uh, Damascus where it just stayed put for a long time. And then I brought it here to California distorted it, twisted it, layered it many more times. I, I believe a lot of patterns are created from here. And, uh, and they tell a story, you know, this is a story that spans a big chunk of the world. And so, uh, this is a very interesting find where it's a British artist who and this pattern. Lots of Beautiful. It's a royal um, This is called uh, this experiment. And it's uh, again a mushroom uh, But when you look through it, you don't see the power, but just more mushroom beads. So it doesn't sort of give up what your fantasy wants. And then this one. I'm I'm a Jewish and when I met Doris I had the opportunity to go to the Arab American Museum for a conference and I was struck by how I felt like the stories of the Palestinians were so similar to the stories of my family. And there was just this weird sort of through the looking glass kind of experience I had. So when I uh, in home, I started to uh, look at the partition plan and I printed it down and I photographed it and um, we created these landscapes from them. And, um, and then these over here are also from uh, from photographs of the petition plan and then layered with other things and the, the whole um, design that is um, the, what's put together in this case kind of here is a um, distortion of the Pledge of Allegiance. 
and the Judeo Arabic, which was the language that my parents grew up speaking. So, in these, I call these knitting quilts of knitting together. I do it's a piece I'm still working on. It's a it's a collaboration with uh, Egyptian American artist Nada Shalabi. And ideally the light will kind of move around to see contacts. I want to take it from there and then. So it becomes a very different piece depending on how it's lit. Yeah, and, and I think uh, the lighting and the mechanics have to be worked out and perhaps a much larger version so that the body really have to the body to get get it. And I really wanted to put it in before before I put it in places because you know we're interested in content and dealing with content. A question came up about those pieces. Um, or what is the medium? What are you making them? Is it paper or is it something else? Oh, yeah, all the pieces over here. What are you making? Working on? Okay, all hand to hand. Uh, not those, those are manufactured. <laughs> and uh, so, you know, the three of us, Marjorie Joyce and I, got all this weird. We like that over there. We got to live with her father from Railsford, who does these fantastic tools. And one of these, you know, it's a balsa wood hand carved ship of actual ships. And then you can also wear them. And they're quite comfortable. They, they sit very nicely, <laughs> strangely. Um, so we want peace. Our work is motivated by finding ways of conversing, peace. And there is this point in the paper made out of So I'm going to zoom in here so people can see. These are actual the envelopes that you know the little windows that are on your envelopes that come and you just cut them all out from hundreds of envelopes. Saved over a period of about 15 years. I've made maps out of them also, which are not here for maybe next time. And then I just want to talk a little bit about Robin's work. I'm going to show you the, here, the uh, rings I have on my fingers, and they're very comfortable. Believe it or not, I, I tried them out. I was on the computer with them. They're very comfortable. They're kind of like beloved friends. <laughs> <laughs> so the work is very comfortable. This is... Uh, Paintbrush by Wick Alexander, very well-known uh, Southern California painter. Spools, found objects, streamers, a lot of uh, mid-century objects. And the work is just stunning. And this is a beautiful one, too. Isn't that gorgeous? And, it, and it's very comfortable to wear. And anyway, thank you. Oh, my earrings, bro. These are robins. <laughs> All right. Awesome. Thank well, thank you guys for letting us stop in in your world here. You're going to be here tomorrow? Yep, we'll be back tomorrow.
video. See, look at that. <laughs> All right, you guys have a great day. All right. Let me, uh, let me get out here. All right, thank you guys. Thanks for letting us visit. All right, and look at this colorful corridor here. She is over there. No? Okay. Okay. I don't have her Wi Fi. So. I don't think I have your Wi Fi, so hopefully we still pick up their signal. Welcome to App Play. Previews. All right. Our next stop is the catwalk and then Okay. So she's not in today? Oh, okay. So where are we? Yeah, that was one. All right, folks, you're definitely going to lose Wi-Fi here for a second. All right, folks, hopefully we're still connected here. Running up staircases, getting out of the concrete box, heading outside. And we are outside of the building. Now I'm going to tell you a little about the brewery. Yes, we're no longer on ground floor. We are on the catwalk, the famous catwalk. Many people are scared of the catwalk. They don't like to be on this side because they're like, I'll fall through. Some people don't like to lean over. Ah! I have, I like heights, so I actually love it up here. Uh, the brewery is a huge place. Uh, it is the world's largest art colony. About 550 artists live and work here. Yes, I said that right. 550 artists live and work here. There is, uh, depending on how you count them, anywhere from about 20 to 23 different buildings here. I think it's about 17 acres. I'm walking across the catwalk here, you're getting a view. So that famous smokestack right there, a lot of people might recognize that if they've ever driven on the five freeway. They probably drove by and said, hey, we can go over there and grab a beer, but you can't, because it's no longer a brewery. This was put up, the, build, the brewery started in the late 1800s. 1897 is when they uh, were working on the actual brewery, and then they added in the Edison power plant over there, where the smokestack is which was completed about 1904. When it was completed, it was considered the most, one of the most advanced power plants in the world. Back in those days, it was like, ooh, look, the wonders of electricity. Um, so in 1904, they completed that. It served the community around it. Like back then, power plants were very local. So you see Lincoln Heights here. So it served this whole community, which was a suburb, one of the first suburbs, because sometimes called the first suburb of downtown Los Angeles. You see right here, it says fermenter and storage cellar. That's because this room right here, this whole building, used to be where they did cold storage. That giant concrete box I was just in, which we were having so much signal problem, it's just a giant concrete box with foam insulation. So a lot of the walls in there, if you nail on the wall real hard, it's literally foam. Your walls look like concrete, but they're actually foam. Now, if you see down here also, see all these trees, all this nice greenery, vines, Spin around this way, you'll see more of them. This is an asphalt jungle, make no mistake. We are literally standing on a bunch of asphalt right now. If you look up closely at all these trees, it's really neat. A long time ago, someone basically just cut a little hole into the asphalt until they hit dirt and they dropped a seedling down there. And now they've grown into all these giant trees. But you know, 30 years ago, this was all just asphalt. Uh, it was an east side brewery from 1897 until 1946. Survived prohibition uh, by doing soft drinks. 1946, uh, it was bought by Paps Blue Ribbon, PBR. You guys all know PBR, right? So it became a PBR brewery in 1946. Uh, Paps decided to move out. There's a lovely view of downtown. I'm going to get you guys up there close. Look at that. Lovely view of downtown from our little barbecue patio up here. This is actually uh, another aspect of the brewery. This is the Brewery Barbecue Museum. 
It's an example of barbecues dating back about 50 years up here. We can see barbecues of all types and shapes up here. Uh, it looks like as they cleaned it out, there used to be about 30 more up here. Um, like I said, uh, Pabst Blue Ribbon left the brewery in about 1976 or so, and it was acquired by a company called Carlson Industries. Uh, Carlson Industries originally bought it, and I better get this right because uh, I believe Kristen Carlson's on this uh, tour right now. Uh, they bought it originally for the equipment, all the, the beer vats, all the aluminum, copper, all the stuff out of the uh, power plant. They bought it for that primarily. But once they're done stripping everything out, cutting holes in the wall to get all the vats out, they're left with all these giant buildings, these empty shells. And uh, turned out when they decided maybe they'd try renting them out to people, the people that responded were, weirdly enough, artists. All these artists came looking for a space. And so that's how the brewery art colony was basically born. In 1984, the city of Los Angeles actually passed something, the artists and residency route laws that allowed artists to live in non residential zone spaces so they could live in these crazy warehouses they could exist in these crazy warehouses without being illegal uh, they weren't you know considered squatting and things like that so that's how the brewery art colony with its 550 people came to be it slowly grew from the first building they redeveloped all the way till it expanded and i'll show you the limits of it here see right down there there's the big little mansion thing on the corner and it stretches all along molten avenue Stretches all along here, all through there. These buildings over here, all through there. And then the smokestack building and then past that as the corner. And see that building on the end there? All those glass windows? That's actually one space. One person has this giant space up there. Sounds awesome. You're like, oh my God, it's so huge. Except, you know, you can never get away from the searing daylight no matter what time of day it is. And other downside, there's no elevator. So you got to be walking up four flights of stairs every day. You know, you forget something in your car, it's going to take you a 10-minute round trip. All right, we're going back inside here. Uh, again, we could always lose Wi-Fi. It happens. Um, yeah, we're going to stop here. One of our artists had to uh, had to not be in it. She, see, so sorry, cannot open for our walk this weekend. Dawn, this is Dawn Aerosmith space. She's on the website. Uh, she is on the website, so please check her out. Um, check out her work. What she does? She does acrylic. Uh, graphic, uh, sort of abstract graphics. Abstract graphics. Uh, you can check out Dawn's stuff. Unfortunately, Dawn couldn't be with us, but she is living in this space right here. All right, we're going to spin down the staircase of death to Oscar Sheldon's. Hopefully, I don't. Oh my gosh! You guys are. What's the movie? Vertigo. Right now, besides me, we'll all survive the walk down here. Except maybe me, because I'm watching this instead of safety third. I heard you. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Okay. I want to catch this first. Connecting. There, I think we got back on Wi-Fi. All right, folks, you should be back with us if you lost us for a minute. Our next tool to artist is running. Bits of faded paint that still save paps in various hidden places. So it's kind of fun to wander around and see all the stuff. Now we're going to wander into a... Uh... Uh-oh. Hey, Oscar! We're coming in! So you can turn this off. Coming back for tour number two. All right, let's look up there and see John, uh, Oscar trying to kill himself no, on his scissor lift. I, no, I have uh, I got one last board to go on the inside of this boat and the boat's gone. All right. Well, come on now and tell us about your art down here. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And we're going to see uh, we're going to see your scissor lift work come together as he goes down. Okay. As he tries to put his power tools away. Safety third, safety third. 
All right, I'm going to do a quick circle while he gets himself ready. Oh, no, we can't miss this. I mean, this could be actually our clip that goes on YouTube, you know. Okay. All, right. All right, you get to see artists in action here. And you get to see the work on his scissor lift come together as he comes down. One minute to scissor lift. Oh, oh, teasing us. There, oh, there we go. All right, Oscar, remember, speak super loud while you're here. Because okay. uh, our audio is never perfect. Tell us about your right. place. So, since you guys have left. Remember, it's a whole new group. It's a whole new group. They don't remember last time. Oh, okay. Well, anyways, uh, they were, you guys were here earlier today. I'm just trying to tighten the place up, finish this boat up, um, paneling the inside right now. Just hung this painting up right here um, in the last hour, and then I just hung this up right here. And then let me, let me, this is another, let me turn on the black lights. And then we'll do a walk through your whole place. Yeah. And uh, let me turn on the black lights. Damn, I was trying to get the I was trying to get the upstairs all. That's all right. All right. I was trying to get the upstairs all dialed in for you guys. All right, we're coming walking in. Tell us what we see. Hold on, let me just turn on the light. It's off. Set the mood right here. <laughs> Start, start over here. Oh, going back out this way? Yeah. You got to start from the beginning. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. All right. We're going to walk. We're going to walk. All right. Now you're coming in. Uh, this is the space bar right here. It's uh, me and a bunch of my buddies. There's there's me as the captain in the middle. A <laughs> um, bunch of buddies. The painting actually tells a giant life story. Very long. We don't have time. Um, friends, relatives, a bunch of people inside, hidden inside of the painting. A bunch of uh, small space characters. You know, they're partying in the space bar here. So this is the one view of it. And then up above you have the belly of the beast, which is actually, this is on three quarter inch OSB, which is floorboard. So now it's been turned into a ceiling board. You got Buddy the Shark right here. You got a Salvador Dali 8x4 on plywood right here, built into the wall. Below it, another 8x4 called their watching, built into the wall. Below that, a cut up mountain piece, also 8x4, built into the wall. Now we have my hulls, my storage, just put all my art supplies up here all morning. And this is the other side of the space bar. So you can see it's the same picture, but it's from a different angle. It's actually the same bar painted twice on the same physical uh, walls. So we just kind of turn these four walls into a, well, into a space bar. <laughs> Um, then I decided that, well, maybe we should build a real space bar. So, proceeded to ripping out the top floor, and, well, I guess first you should pour it around this, but this is the mural that I spent all of COVID painting. Um, let me uh, shine this other black light over here, so I can see it lit up properly. Uh, here we go. Let's see if I my favorite guys. Um, actually, well, my actual favorite in the thing is this, is this eel right here. The eel, the eel actually ties the whole piece together with these three walls. You can see he starts his mouth here, then his fin comes up right here around on this other wall. Then he goes under the water, he comes out here in the corner, comes around the bend, and then he goes both, and he goes right behind Mount Octopius. See, that's a mountain. So it's a hybrid with uh, the Octopians. See all the tentacles? And then comes up behind old T-Rex, and there's his tail. So then if you step back, you can get a good idea of the entire field. Get a really good shot, but I don't know why I painted it like 
painted the whole thing, and that's my favorite creature in the painting. I did about, eight, it's about eight layers of paint, so it really glows, too. I do like the shark, too. There's actually a painting within the painting in his side of his mouth. You can see there's a little, there's a little beaked octopus sitting in a waterfall, and three pirate ships coming out of the gills. Some other pirate ships inside the mouth of the uh, ocean, which is also in the T-Rex mouth. Um, and then, okay, the real space bar. Um, oh, and note also the ceiling. This is the hanging ceiling uh, art right here. So these are uh, drop cloths that um, just Home Depot painting drop cloths. Um, they're great canvases, they're really tough, and they take paint really well. So I started having this guy, I buy the 12 by 15s, three of them, and I have them sewed together right down the street, and then I can stretch these giant canvases. And then I, some guys that did rigging showed me how to do some little tricks. So basically all these are, all these, all these ceiling pieces have two by fours wrapped one and a half times at the base, stapled on there. And you can see they have eye bolts screwed into them. And then they go onto these pulleys, which are attached to the headboards all over my, I have my entire place all the way around every beam. I have two by six inch headboards mounted. Uh, they're set into the concrete walls. So I can actually, I can let this thing down. These are adjustable. I can drop it down in 30 seconds. Well, if anybody wants to buy one, it can be yours. Even the big one. The big one I can get down in five minutes. So the big one, you can see all the lines are over here. This big one has five lines on it. It needs five different lines in order to hoist properly. But it's kind of cool. You can play with these big canvases and you can move them around. I can go up, higher, lower, left, right. This one has one loose string on it because I was doing some work with it last night. You can see it's sitting cockeyed. Someone's asking, do you sell your work? Yeah, every, everything's for sale. I should tell everyone that. All these artists here are professional artists. We're all working this for every, a living. Whoever asked that, <laughs> yeah. come on down. Come on, everything's yeah. for sale. And that goes for every artist you're going to see today. Well, this is how we make our living. We're not like you know an attorney or an accountant or a whatever else and then just an artist. Right. We don't work at Home Depot and then our artists. We are just artists. Although some of us are here. tempted to work at Home Depot so we can get an employee discount. But. Welcome yourself to the actual space bar, which was just completed about three days ago. So this is all new. Uh, the maids came and did a dusting frenzy. If you step over here, you can see what I'm, I was actually working on as you guys walked in. Uh, just putting in these last, this last little, uh, I just have one more over here. One more board on the right to uh, put in this plywood board. And then, uh, and then I can put all my nice cushions and everything up here. This is going to be an upper lounge for, for chilling. And then you can watch movies over that big window. It's got a screen that goes over that. And there's another screen that goes down, that goes right here. So the goal today was to have been completely done with the screen projecting here and down there with slideshows of my art. But unfortunately, uh, I just wasn't able to get it done physically in time. So it's just too much work for one guy. But I did get a monumental amount done. The top half is now remodeled. So now it kind of goes with the whole theme, um, and these are actual these are actual canvases off the 1964 Santa Barbara Cruiser. So that's kind of cool because they became they're off my old boat, which is in that painting right there on the right up there. And uh, well, that's all that's left of the boat, so it's kind of cool because the boat was shipwrecked. So. So you still have the canvases now I have the from the canvases sales. and I have the steering wheel. <laughs> but the actual vessel is destroyed. So, anyways, me and the guy who built it, we we built this ship inside of my house kind of as a tribute to that boat because we all love the boat and spent a lot of time on it. Question, someone asked, how does living in your space, like living in your art, influence your art? Um, I guess. 
risk. It's just never done. Never done. I like it's that. never done. You just, you say it's done and then you keep working on it, you know? Like oh. even this giant painting, like I was looking at it last night and I, now I want to start going back into it. And, and you know, I swore I'd never touch it again. It's just, the, I mean, I don't know, I guess living around it. I actually did this giant piece. I did this giant piece because I was sick of all my old artwork. So I have like a massive storage container full of other pieces, but I just, um, I wanted all new stuff. And this is on the wall, so it can't be taken off. So cool. um, this is something that I could just work on for years and change around. I still have all my originals. All right, Oscar, we're heading on now. Thanks for letting us swing by and visit and see what you got in progress. Cool, cool. And we're going to take one last look at these hallways as we walk out. Yeah, yeah. Wait, get Buddy, get oh. buddy right here. Don't forget Buddy the shark. Oh, I'm saying. Okay. Right. Oh, last shot of the shark. There we go. That's Buddy right there. He's keeping an eye on us. All right, Oscar. Good to see you, man. All right. All right, folks. We're stepping back out here. What's that? Your entrance is this way, right? That's the review. Oh, yeah? <laughs> all right. Wait, guys, how do I see all this? They'll be archived on site. All right, folks, we might lose Wi Fi again. Oh, yeah. I'm going to signal jump to the next one. Like me. Oh. Ding. 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 All right. Here we go. Here's our next artist. I'm going to zoom in on his thing right here. Olivier, and uh, show us what you got here. Come on vicious. Oh, now he's not so vicious. Now he's jumping on me and licking me. All vicious until he says a slobber on me. What's up, puppy? All right. So remember, speak nice and loudly because the audio is tough to get sometimes here. Okay, well, mainly. Uh, Just give me a turn that on. Hold on a minute. We got to turn off our other audio going. Oh, well, we'll make do. <laughs> All right, so tell us about yourself and what you do. Well, my name is Olivier, and uh, I do bronze sculpture. I've done it with a few paintings here. Uh, since I have my mask on, I can tell you these are my exes. <laughs> and this is uh, androgyny. Pretty much speaks for itself as far as androgynous. And that one is Purgatory. That was the first one I did. Now this one you have to get really close on because it's so small to get the, the faces at all. That's the mountain. And there's 20 heads on, the, on this one. Faces. 
see anything. I use magnifying glasses when I start there. And here's a, here's a youth, an old age. Here's the face of the mountain, the sleeper. And along the back side, there's the witch and the man-child. And they all have names, but <laughs> there it goes. This is another androgyny. This one is textured with a dark patina. And here's the bonsai. It's a maple that I had, uh, well, that I cast. And then I TIG welded the branches and and uh, gold soldered the leaves onto the twigs. I centrifugal cast the leaves and sculpted them in wax. I'm making these pedestals, so I have the mold back here, and here's another mold I'm working on. That had no arms, so we put arms on it, and I started the mold. Because I thought with arms it would change the story a bit. I think it, it's been without arms for, cast that way forever. Here's over here, it's a mold for the pedestal. That's the pedestal mold. And you saw the room that we made up there. So again, as I mentioned to you guys earlier, remember these are the places these artists live and they work and it's their gallery, their exhibition. Uh, someone asked, can I see the paralysis quote? Was it was the paralysis quote? I'm not sure what they're referring to. Paralysis. I don't know what they're referring to. Quote? I don't know. Yeah, I'm not sure what they're referring to. Sorry, whatever you're referring to, I'm not sure, so. Who's talking? Uh, just all the people, the hundreds watching us right now. Well, the paralysis quote, the only quote. Oh, it says it's the corner where the mold is? Oh, oh maybe on the wall there? Oh, okay. oh, yeah. Let's see what they're talking about. Someone wanted to see this right here. All right, well, someone wanted your quote there. Well, there's another quote. Uh, this sculpture over here. Just to play around with quotes, this a quote inspired me to do this piece. And the quote was by Celine, and he said, "Maybe that's what we're looking for throughout life. That and nothing more. The greatest misery there is to feel is to, before death, truly become oneself." That something. So that inspired me to make people they're pretty much looking at their own mortality. All right. On the mountains. Someone asked who said that quote? Uh, Celine. Celine. All right. Thank you so much for letting us okay, stop by and showing you us your awesome studio. We'll do a quick circle around here again so you guys can all see the whole, the whole place. There's that wall. And then, like I said, upstairs is... The kitchen and house and little, love the little wood paneling up there. That's amazing. All right. And say goodbye to you, puppy. She smells, she smells like 12 cats on me. All right. The next mega.
Yeah. Come on. Yeah. You want to go down the middle stairs or do you want to come down these front stairs? Uh, we'll go down these. All right, folks, we might cut out again as we walk into the concrete box and outside again. We'll see what happens. Now, again, these are all the old hallways of the brewery. And all these doors are different people living in these different artists living here. You guys are still with us and we didn't lose the signal completely. Walking down and we walked down all the flights of stairs back to ground level. You see the community. As you can see, we have all the regular functions of a regular community, including laundry rooms. We have really creepy staircases that go down into uh, and there's an actual dungeon down there. Some dungeon keeper lives down there. It's really creepy. I was down there once, and I can't believe I made it out alive. All right. Now I'll give you a little bit more of a background where we are. Remember we were up on the roof looking at the smokestack building? Well, that's the smokestack building now from the ground floor. And what we have here is like the old loading docks of the brewery. And all these glass windows now, where this was all warehousing or loading area, place where trucks would pull up, things like that. Now it is all residences and all artist studios. So again, 550 artists live here. And so these are some of their spaces here. Now we're going to go to our next place. I'm going to reconnect Wi-Fi, hopefully. Let me give that a try. See what happens. <laughs> All right, Vaughn, Vaughn tell us tell us what you got. You do you did four glass of wine for me, I assume, right? Uh, no. Oh, okay, well. Bottle, but... Okay. <laughs> I see the whole liquor cabinet there in front of yeah, you. Kind of All right. Uh, so uh, welcome back. This is uh, I do mostly acrylic and uh, charcoal on uh, canvas. Um, and uh, I brought it all here to. Show everybody. Uh, so go on and take a look. Is that I us live? Last time, so I put the, the website and the Instagram on the, uh, right. on the wall So I've always been a bit of a doodler, and so a lot of these just come from little sketches that I do if I'm in a boring meeting or something and then then they get bigger and I add color. <laughs> so uh, you know, I've told me before, I used to be so inspired when I was in the corporate world because I'd have these boring meetings. It's, Man, you can doodle some, up stuff. All my best. Once I got out of the corporate world, I can't come up with anything good anymore because I'm never <laughs> bored like that anymore. <laughs> Nothing like a sales meeting to make right. you write your greatest pieces. This is so meta. They have us broadcast on the wall as I'm doing the tour right now so I can... Oh my goodness, it's <laughs> it's creeping me out a little. Cool. So uh, you can find me on the Brewer Rock uh, page or go to art.vonhannon.com or Vonhannon Art on Instagram. Uh, you'll see a lot of sketches for Inktober because I'm in the middle of that right now. But uh, find me, reach out, and thanks for coming by. Great. Thanks for having us, Vaughn. All right. Cheers.
See you later, little dude. You say bye. <laughs> Oh, fun fact, I think there are more cats than people in the brewery. There's a lot of window reflection there, but there's one of our little buddies there. Oh, there. Smile for the camera. All right. Oh, media collection guess. All right, folks, we're going to do another Wi-Fi pop. We're entering what's called the atrium right now. All right, let's go on in here. How's it been going? Uh, great. How are you guys doing? I don't know. You tell us. It's completely changed it's from when I was in here. Different. <laughs> I was in here like two hours ago, and it was completely laid out different. Know. So we've been working. This whole wall was way. Well, I'm confused. All right. Well, tell me what you got. Let's. You got a whole new audience, so let's tell them what you guys do. Okay. So we're Media Pollution. We do video installation. Oh, and speak super loud. Remember. Um, I'm Dan. It's Connor, Brian, Royce, Veronica. We got the whole. Here. And uh, yeah, so we work with Vintage Electronics basically and recycled electronics, and we make installations out of old technology. So um, before, and Dust, Dustin, right? Uh, Kevin. Kevin. Kevin's <laughs> here. Um, sorry. When Kevin was here, before we had a wall here, and we broke it apart, and now we're setting up for a shoot tomorrow, and we're making. Ironically, this was the last installation we had set up for our club. And that was a year ago, today, I believe. And we're building it again. So the idea is that, you know, there will be these arches and you'll walk through. And if you were here, it'd be a really cool, immersive experience. So. Oops. Yeah, there's stuff yeah. everywhere. There's stuff I gotta everywhere. be looking down, looking forward. Yeah, yeah. TVs everywhere. This is a pretty much trying to take advantage of every nook and cranny in this place. Yeah. You know. Um, every spot I look, there's some old television, yeah. some old equipment. Yeah. So kind this of amazing. A, a, a to be video wall, massive video wall. Just chilling, <laughs> waiting to be repaired. So what's so great is that Brian is the director of reuse at a Homeboy Recycling Electronics. And so he has the knowledge of being able to fix one of these when it breaks, usually. Yeah, so, yeah so far pretty good. Yeah. So far pretty good. So uh, that's uh, been really great. Uh, and... Um, yeah. Homeboy's been really great. Um, you can donate to them if you have any old electronics you want to get rid of. Yeah, we're always looking for laptops these days. We, we get it out to good folks who need them. So, yeah, no one really needs CRTs, so we decided to make art with them. You know, uh, most folks don't. Uh, we, we started finding these on the street corner and uh, just started turning them into our canvas. You know, that was really what, what sort of inspired us was just all the junk that was around us. 
and the opportunity for each one of these things to be its own special canvas. Sometimes the best TVs are the TVs that don't work right, supposedly. You know, mm -hmm. that they have like their own special character. Um, but yeah, we use uh, all sorts of stuff. It's it's not just. to the TVs and uh, yeah that's really what you should check out you should check out our Facebook and our Instagram and uh, see the videos that we made with this stuff because unfortunately we're not set up right now you what's know? your uh, what's your Instagram again at media pollution it's so, at media pollution is their Instagram guys so I recommend checking out like I said this one because they're setting up for another project right now things are kind of a jumble you want us to check upstairs too we can take a look up hey, there Royce. Right. Yeah. we're coming up Make sure Royce has his shirt on. So I used to live here with my wife for three years. Now we live upstairs. Royce lives here now. Hello. And so we're kind of yeah. making another installation upstairs. Yeah, we're and making another set here. Again, out of like all used and weird different electronics. But this is going to become somewhat functional too. We're going to set up like video games, vintage video games and stuff like that. And um, make a little green room, but also a great place to shoot. You know, just in this to hang out, uh, keeping the old living room based basement vibes from the 90s, 80s, and 90s. Um, but yeah, we just did a shoot this last weekend for it. We're going to be doing another music video coming out. I don't know when, a couple weeks, a couple months. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we make, we, yeah, we make, you know, crazy cool. visual art on old television. Then. All right. Head back downstairs so everyone can get a good overhead view yeah. here. We just did the boom box wall, so that's fairly new. And uh, yeah, we've had a lot of time to work in the studio, as I imagine all of us have. So, really been trying to get it dialed in so we can do more studio based productions because we were really an event, event based company. You know, so you're basically having to shift yourself because of Corona yeah, to a whole different so thing. I have a filmmaking background and we've always done like music videos and productions and stuff, but now we're really just have to make it our focus as opposed to festivals and stuff like that, which we were really catching on really well for us. Uh, 2009. So you just pivoted to a new direction. Just pivoted. You know, All right. Everybody's got to do it right now. So, um, you know, just like, Art walk has to. Yeah. So, uh, we miss art walk. Careful the wood you have to work. Um, yeah. yeah. All right. Well, guys, don't uh, don't despair over Corona. Just pivot to something new and awesome. Looks like you guys are doing that. I love it. I love to see what you guys are doing here. I know I've been coming to your studio for a couple of years now. So I swear there's. Five times more TVs than when I first came in here. So definitely, yeah. we've been growing. Yeah. <laughs> it's good to see. It's good to see that. Uh, I imagine if I come back in ten years, it's just gonna even the ceiling is yeah. gonna be decorated yeah. with them. Well, we'll need a bigger studio. All right, <laughs> you guys have a good one. Take it easy. All right, folks. What we got here is what's known as the atrium. The atrium is one of the buildings here in the brewery. It's not necessarily its own building, but. Uh, it's kind of this neat little space. Kind of reminds me of like a Van Nuys apartment block, except it's got a ceiling on top. There should be like a little empty swimming pool here with no water, and it would totally be like the tr cliched Los Angeles apartment building. Um, it's, so it's on a little Melrose Place thing, you know. You never know who loves each other, who hates each other in here. The gossip going on in the atrium is constant. Uh, we're going to see who Todd next. I'm going to pop over to Todd's Wi-Fi signal here. There Let's zoom in right there on his name, Todd Westover. Ready, Todd? You are live. No shoes. <laughs> Can you hear me? Checking one, too. Yes? I think everyone can hear you, but make sure you talk nice and loud. Am I on? Looking beautiful. Come on in. So uh, I'm going to focus on new work mainly. You want me to walk around well, yeah, do what we did before? Yeah, just do a lap and I'll right. meet you back over here. All right. I'm going to do a lap, folks.
I might be out of breath when I'm done here. Todd's going to make me exhausted by the end of this. This one's really little. It's also new. It's actually going to be in an a, a art show in a dollhouse. This is one of my favorite paintings. shops in those days behind the curtain, the beaded curtain, and they had these in, you know, in a rack. Todd put on sunglasses and is now skateboarding by, if you notice. This one's 10 feet tall. This one. Just finished it actually. This one too. Look what happens in a pandemic is, uh, or you know, when we're stuck at home, is I ended up painting on old paintings. So this is still in progress. Although I think I'm done. Yeah, tell me to stop because I, I think it's done. Todd, stop. Thanks. Look at that quick change back into sunglasses. Oh, you didn't see it, he hit his head. It was pretty epic. These are new. Line of clothing, scarves, lovely, <laughs> um, pants, yoga pants, bags, purses, pillows, kimonos. This is my favorite hanger. I've had this since I was a kid. Prints. I have prints of almost everything here. This is a, a very popular one. This is a silk screen. There were 11, now there's two. Someone asked the clothing, it's printed, not hand painted, right? It's printed, yeah. yes. From your paintings. From the paintings, yes. These are new. There were three, I sold one recently. It's in France. Very honored to have it in another country. These are new-ish. Down here. These are framed prints, large framed prints. 
Someone wants to know, is your new work up on your website yet? It is. Most yeah. everything's on the website. So You're uh, one of those people that's good at updating your website? I am pretty good. <laughs> good. I'm not one of those people. <laughs> so westovertodd.com. Did you hear that? westovertodd.com. And remember, it's always on the Brewery Art Walk page, too. It has all these links. These are small framed prints, very affordable. Affordable. I have more. They're, they sell very uh, quickly, those small ones. Uh, over here is a book with um, actually not everything, because since this book is published, I've painted like 30 more paintings. So, but, but there we go. That's also on the website. I also have uh, greeting cards, box, and individuals. And that's kind of my tour. We're, we, you guys need to buy some Todd stuff so we can give him some socks or some slippers. That's, uh, that's, that's the fun we're creating here. So we don't have to see him barefoot always every time. It's Thank the, you, Kevin. the Todd sock fun. Todd, always good to see you. Great having a chance to visit. And I'm heading back into the atrium. Okay. All right, folks. So as you can see, like I said, a lot of greenery here in the brewery. This is actually another one of those examples. I mean, they just pull, cut squares into the concrete at some point there, threw some trees in, and next thing you know, we have greenery. And there's a lot of, if, I were to walk, if you were to actually join us on an actual physical tour, which we you know, do when there's no pandemic, we point out a lot of this weird just gardening stuff and architecture stuff. There's just so much of it. It's kind of amazing how much of it is here in the brewery of just interesting, weird things you wouldn't expect to see in what is giantly, a giant concrete jungle. All right, I'm switching to a new Wi-Fi. Let's get... And there's Burton himself. Oh, rats. I was really excited getting up the Burton Drew. I love that guy. <laughs> Anyways, here's your wine that you've been begging oh. for. Help oh, yourself. wait. I, I got two extra glasses for the ladies if they're interested. I, I bugged him earlier because he didn't have a glass of wine for me. So, cheers, Burton. Cheers. You want some? I hope so. I don't have a mask ah. on. You can party. You You're the first person to give me any refreshments. Here I walk around to all these different studios. Just one person? Oh, okay. I'm still the drop, but here you go. I'm sweating, running around. You're the first one, Burton. First one to well, give me any refreshments. The Thank you. <laughs> then again, if everyone gave me a glass of wine, by now I'd probably be pretty lit up trying to do this tour. Well, so yeah, it'd be a different tour. Anyway, so look at my spiel. I'm Burton Gray. I like wine. And oh, hold on. Turn off the yeah, whatever music you got going there. It was you. Uh, you guys always got your various podcasts or me going. I so can't. I know you're coming this time. <laughs> All right. And then. Uh, Oh, and speak yeah. loud. Uh, hello, I'm Burton Gray. I like wine, as you just discovered. Uh, I was an oil painter. I'm now a digital painter. Um, so when you look around, a lot of my stuff still looks like it's done in oil. This is an exception. This is a uh, all my greatest hits, kind of like all like digitalized into one image. Um, but that's the only time I really do that. That's only my stick. I usually paint more like an oil painting, go layers. But I evolve my pieces over time. Uh, get some points like this big skull here. You can see how it started out black and white, color, and then different color. Come on, I'll back these up some more. Oh, well, I guess these are kind of relevant. I sell these online. Uh, pretty much everything I have is available. If you don't see something you want, let me know. I have, I do a lot of extra paintings. I generally actually only post the pieces that I really love for my main website, burtongrade.com. Uh, but on Instagram, I'm always posting like sketches and stuff. If sometimes people like those, let me know, I'll put it up. Or you can just order directly from me. For these studio production versions, you have to order them directly from me. I'll get more into that upstairs. Oh shoot, I got my list of you upstairs too. This is terrible. I blew it. Uh, we'll survive. I'll talk extra loud. So, okay, so what do I do in-house? Just to familiarize, I mean, if you want to see more of my stuff, go online. On a side note, Kevin, if anyone has any questions about any of the pieces around, interrupt me, and I'll explain the pieces. Because I love talking about art much more than 
like the sales crap, but the sales crap is kind of what you guys are here. So a little bit about the product, what I'm selling. So I paint these digitally. Um, I print them out here. Kevin can turn them on later. Um, I print on this case on canvas, and then I stamp them on that machine over there. Let's see if it's, it's kind of subtle on the canvas. I'll show you one more obvious one. On the back, you know, it's finished off. Got a thumbprint signed. Um, I can address it to uh, memory. I do black sides, colored side, red, whatever, metal sides, or I can stain the sides, any color wood. I usually like red mahogany, but I can take requests. Um, and then here's the stamper. I like a white sheet of paper. Oh my gosh, I usually have a pile of white paper right here, but I was cleaning up for you guys. Here we go. So. And what decade was this machine made? This is. Sorry. Yeah, you can kind of see it there. There, I got it. Yeah. Got it. Um, it's an old. It's a fun story. My dad tracked it down. He was a printer. Um, basically, we were looking for some way to get a, a six-point face stamp, so it's like a high detail one. It's very easy to get a one-point one. Anyways, you need a ton of torque and a lot of pressure to get that. They have them. But you have to get like a hydraulic press nowadays. So in order to just do one up at a time, you got to go old school, which they stopped making like 70 years ago. This is over 100 years old. My dad checked it down. It was like broken down in the back of a old printer's museum. Um, they had a floor model that looked awesome, and this one looked like crap, but it works. So we like, well, it almost works. We got like some metal guys to fix it up, and now I can do it on the man. So that's how you know it's coming directly from me versus on the website. Now, I don't want to like undersell my website. Burgerbrand.com, the main art section, all those options are like killer quality. They're fine art production house arguably better than what I can do in-house and probably faster, but they don't do the wood panel sides, which I love, and they don't do my face prints. And and also, if you want something specific for your needs, I can do the different shapes and sizes that might not be available. It just takes a little bit longer. It takes me two to three weeks. They can usually get it to you within three weeks, including shipping, usually. Um, that's it in a nutshell for the business thing. So now I can talk into like the creative process. Yeah, so, let's do it. Let's do it to it. Also, I cleaned up upstairs if you want to do like Five minute quick demo instead. <laughs> just let me know. But um, in a nutshell, or do you want to see how I work? No, let's let's, let's do we'll do this. these and then we'll pop upstairs. All right. So like, um, well, I talked about this one last time. I'll talk hey, you talk about the same? Group, it's a right? different group. All new people. All right, welcome new group. This is my big green tree. So these are kind of related. As I got into earlier today, um, they weren't really meant to go together, but they serve complementary functions. They both are functional for your like, lifestyle, and they're kind of a mix of form and narrative working together. And they, I mean, they could be done in oil paint, but in order to make these things work together, it takes a lot of time and experimentation, and then you can zoom in and get these details, and now I can make it still high-quality productions. It's like a recording by painting is the beauty of digital. That's the bottom line. Um, so that, that leads to the ability to just like put in tons of time and just keep evolving it. So at this point, the ultimate goal and to make it work is it's got all these forms that are kind of complicated and it's con high contrast, so the energy is very up, right? And it creates an anxiety when we look at it. The narratives kind of suggest that further, plus of course it's a skull. So all of it alludes to like death and like, but it's very energetic. So it communicates like, um, it makes you think about death, it gets you blood boiling, so it gets you... The goal is making you want to seize the day. Um, also, he alludes to a Dias de Muerto skull. So I'm a big fan of the concept of to uh, appreciate life, you got to embrace death. Um, it's like a bookend. So that's kind of what this is about. Question came in real quick. Uh, what program do you use? What's Photoshop up? exclusively. Exclusive and, Photoshop. Uh, yeah, I got a five-minute quick demo where I can give it down like a minute or two for this purpose. And then um, here I have same con. So that's like to get you anxious to go out and go do stuff. This one is more about relaxing in the middle of your day, like it's breaking your day, like a tea break. Um, I like if you're doing like I, my initial concept was I was doing taxes and like paperwork and I was being really, very anxious, so I wanted to, like get out of that headset, so that headspace. So I started doing like lush green landscapes with like paths, um, just kind of like a mental place. And then I took all those those together and um, melted it melted it into this sort of um, a life cycle piece. So start at the bottom. There's like the the guy bringing you in from nothingness into existence. There's a birth canal. There's the first landscape. It's very childlike animals and colorful. So you go up the path, less childlike, and then there's a tree house, then a real house, you keep going, there's a mausoleum, you know, so you start to lose people. The path can turn into water, the water turns into light, and you know, for once you came. So the formal aspects and the nerves should theoretically work together to like give you 
I get focused. So it all draws you to the center and up. So it's getting to like organization and like centers you if you're feeling all scattered brain from anxiety. This one's if you're feeling too much this way and you gotta get like motivated to get out, that's supposed to trigger that. It works for me, the people that like it. I don't know if that's why they buy it, but some people just like skulls. Some people just like the color green. So I Question came in. Why did you decide not to do oil paints anymore and to go digital? Question. Um, I think give me the, give me the. I love answering that, but I got 20 minutes and like, yeah. for like five hours. So glad I had a glass of wine. Um, in a nutshell, creatively, it's uh, creatively. It means you can spend a lot more time. You can. I'm all about the image, right? With oil paint, you gotta like bang them out. Um, you gotta like make like a ton of new stuff because they keep moving out. You gotta do the same stuff. You gotta have like your brand. That's just the economics of it. With digital, I'm embracing the idea. It's more like the music industry. I just try to make. Every song or every track that I, I focus on, I want it to be good for whatever reasons, you know? So it's like a band. They can focus on one song that speaks to one emotion, and then they can do a totally different piece over here and just sell them individually, you know, as like individual tracks. So just target the market. So basically that just means you, you don't get stuck in a bubble of having to do what, one thing. And on the other side, you can put a ton of time into it because it's not longer about economics of selling one piece to one time at the highest price point. That's the goal of like all fine art, you know, max maximizing demand and then having limited quantity of one. Um, this one is you create the demand and you fill it by having something that's so good and meaningful. So the, the goal is to make meaningful work. Another question. How do you print these big giant ones? Right there. And that's what I'm going to show right now. The, the secret to printing is a giant printer. Yeah, that'll do it. Here, uh, here you go. Wine glass for sale, scale. And this is how it comes out. Actually, this has been coded. Uh, someone asked again about the distinction between the ones you do in-house and the ones that you get professionally printed elsewhere. Uh, these are printed and mounted on wood panels. That's the biggest. So the ones in-house are on wood panels. Wood panels, basically. Um, and then these stained. They cost comparable amount, uh, I'd say, um, but these take me a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. We run in short time. We are we are about out of time. And then you got moments. Down. And then this just this is glued down. That these are face down. That's it in a nutshell. It's worth, plus, I can tailor make it, right? So, so it's a little more customizable now. Most else. recently, most notably, I recently, last month, I had a giant green tree of life, not this one, a wide version. And um, I usually do that with wood, and it looks good fine with green sides. Like, if you just get the stretch canvas, most people wouldn't mind. But she had a green room with gold accents, so it was a green piece with, like, rusted gold sides. So, like, integrated the image with the space you have. I'm going to flash upstairs real quick. There's a quick view of uh, the so secret world, uh, the secret how, and then uh, I'm going to flash by this wall real quick as I walk out. And I got to pound my wine as I do it too. So these are all just examples of all the many pieces you've done. So I'm going to try to walk slow here. Want to talk to anybody about these in particular? Um, it's too fast, isn't it? You just can't keep up. Uh, yeah, I guess I can exactly. Talk more about which is your favorite on this whole wall? They're all my favorites. They're like my children. So and they keep evolving. So that's oh, come on, everyone thing. has a favorite child. Um, all that. And on a side note, like the other advantage is, like this could be very tall or very wide. Like this could be a giant square. Online, I think I just I don't I have this version up. I think I just have the black version on a square. So that's the other advantage. When you go through me, I can get extra wide. Again, time isn't an issue. And then I can custom order the panels and I can make it fit your space. For instance, like the green tree, it, it, this is like optimal, I feel, like one-two ratio. But if it's over a couch, let's say, it, I can add like six inches on each side so it has more green. It doesn't have the piece. And it might not look good in a white wall, but in that setting, it will like charge the space more effectively. So it's all about like creatively, I'm about for myself. I'm making these images that are functional. You know, they communicate an emotion that's like necessary to enhance your life. So my goal is to make them integrate into like – environment that I put them in. Anyway, so that's it in the nutshell. And uh, everyone, Burton does do like online streams of him creating his pieces. So definitely go check out his Instagram. Uh, you're going to find out a lot more information about what he does on Instagram. Uh, I definitely ch recommend checking out Burton's Instagram and uh, checking out his awesome shoes. Oh, the office at the end of the spectrum. Mr. No Shoes and then Mr. Yeah, Todd, Todd No Shoes. And then we got Burton wears the same shoes every time. I have never seen Burton. I've known you, what, I mean, a decade? I've never seen him dressed in anything other than what he's wearing right now. Oh, no, I have different vests and I have different ties. That's what you say, but I don't recall I mean, that. I have like a red vest. So I can take this wine to go, right? The whole bottle? Right, I'll give you a glass. No, I'm kidding. I'm out of here. All right, Todd.
I mean, Todd. <laughs> Burton. I'm getting I'm confused. Glass of wine. <laughs> yeah, I know. One, one half glass of wine. I can't remember names. Oh All right, Burton. Good seeing you as always. Again, everyone. Burton Gray. Thank you for the wine. Thank you. All right, guys. Back into the atrium. Now we're heading uh, to Lori's pay place. Last time we had some Wi-Fi problems here, so I'm going to try to connect. Uh, we lost the Wi-Fi signal halfway through. Let's see if I can get it right away this time and get it to stay. Give me a sec, folks. Hey. hey. <laughs> Do you got your mobile hotspot again? Uh, yes, it's on. It's down as, uh, like, iPhone or something? Yes. Let me see if I can catch that. Give me a sec. All right, well, can I come on in? Yes. And uh, we'll try to get it once we're in here. It's not showing at the moment, but okay. we'll see what we can do. I still got Burton's on, so it's still going okay. Okay. So tell Hi. us who you are and why we're here. Hi, I am Lori Shapiro, and back in my studio, I'm a painter and installation artist. And I'm here with Mia Orozco right now, who Hi. runs a company called Performative Pop-Ups. And she was also the director from Radiant Space Gallery. And we've been working together for a few years, so we're just we're just planning things right now. Um, but I'm going to give you a tour of my studio. All right, before we get going, I'm not finding your phone. So if you can see to make sure the connection is there, it's not showing up this time. I mean, I disconnect and re... Let's try that. Let me see. I'm still showing, like I said, I still got Burton's pretty good signal, but I know when we go upstairs in your place, yeah. it gets a little trickier. Uh, well, let's give it a try and we'll see what happens. It's it's not, it's says still... video is out. Video is out. But you should hear you talking. Okay. Let me see here, folks. All right. Backed away again, back into Burton's uh, Wi Fi. Do you see it good? I I see... No, for Can some you reason. Get on... Uh, we tried that last time and we couldn't connect with his either. All right, folks. Oh, there. I went crazy because apparently I smelled like cats. and uh, So your cat almost got me killed, but that's okay. She's very cute, so it's worth this it. This is my studio, um, and there's a bunch of, there's a few different rooms here, so I'm just going to guide us through each of them. This is an installation up here called Alchemy Tunnel, and when you came by earlier, um, this was down, but I moved the walls up because I'm going to be starting some new pieces on it. And while we're in here, too, I'm going to um, put the lights on a – yeah, the lights also move in here. And I'm doing a little bit of that right now. So if you can't tell well in the video, guys, the lights are doing all different things. So it's this whole room changes colors, does all kinds of different things. So. These are a bunch of paintings that I have on display for the art walk. So these are all um, new paintings from since quarantine, really. Okay. And then this is the Red Room, which is another installation in my studio. It's all um, handmade, painting, mixed media, screen prints, a lot of sewing. Just 
just so you guys see it's totally floor to ceiling all of these spaces the floor is done the ceiling is done the walls are done it's the chair is done the lamps are done it's fully immersive i am right now currently in her art and i know it doesn't always show up good on video like this in person it's like amazing sometimes because you know Cameras can't tell when something's bright, when it's dark, and it gets confused. And I know my camera's probably very confused at the moment, but it is a pretty amazing experience to be in here and being like in someone's artwork. Thank you. Turn around and get this one here. There we go. back around what is that strange machine yeah that's my screen printing press so oh. yesterday was a big printing day so it's head on here but it's making a bunch of prints like this that's funny i've been artist my whole life and i've never seen something like this i don't know anything about screen printing though so it's all new to me cool and oh we got our surprise guest Trying to get me in trouble with the dogs earlier. <laughs> so now well, thank you. Guys thank for you. Viewing, and thank you, Kevin. Thanks for hosting us. I'm gonna stick my shoes back on here. So why I didn't tie the laces again? I knew better. I should be able thank to you. slide them back on. And uh, thank you again, everyone. A few questions came in about um, uh, how to contact you. Again, everyone, go to the website, the Brewery Art Walk website, and the contact for all of our artists on there. So you can. Contact them, get their uh, Instagrams, get their Glory. websites. You can get them dancing just like that live. Um, and it's great seeing you guys. Have a great day. Okay. Ooh. Back out in the world, we're going to visit Mr. William Sandell. We're going to connect to his Wi Fi. I can find it. My phone's gone through so many Wi-Fi's it doesn't even know where it is anymore. Hey William, you here? Hey. What's your Wi-Fi again? Which uh, one is it? Inter two. Inner inner two. What's the name on it though? Uh, ATT 360, is that it? No. It's showing up again. Enter Bill. Let's see. Let me uh, do something here. Hold on, folks. We're in business. Tell us who you are. Bill Sandell. Bill Sandell. I've been in the brewery for about five or six years. So I'm an assembly filmmaker, fashion designer for 40 years. 45 years, I suppose. So I make these, uh, I make these uh, sort of weird carny machines. I made them before I, I got the film business. And uh, now I'm making them... After the film, that's how I met film people actually. They started buying my uh, yep. galleries. So, for some reason, it's not finding your signal very well right now. I'm in the other corner. Yeah, stop seeing all these things. There we go. Just connected. Sorry, folks. It looks like we're.
think we're back good. Uh, I wanted to show you. Well, you, you've seen some of my things here, right? Well, remember, this is all new audience, though. Oh. These people have never seen anything. Oh, so. come on in, then. I, it's a whole new crowd every time. I, I, I build a sort of a carnival looking machines that were built for some purpose, but uh, uh, the reason might be obscure. So they always have sort of a weird carny feel, like you might see them set up somewhere. Um, here, here's an example. I mean, this is a, a gambling machine that I made. You, you put your quarters down, or your nickels, actually, and you take a bet. Here. Turn it on, and it slowly grinds out for about 10 seconds, and you do get your wish about uh, two or three days after. And this always has a long line that people that have gotten their wishes come through in mm -hmm. every art walk. There's so like it works. Eight or nine people waiting to get their wishes. So I, you know, I have people ask me all the time, do you collect movie posters? But all the movie posters are movies that I, I've designed. And, so I finally moved into the brewery. I finally have space to hang them all up. So I'm happy about that. For people uh, people following along, it's like being in a clockmaker shop here. Just all these things going, noises all around. So if you can't hear Bill this time, it's not just like he's talking about it. It's a loud place in here. Big fan of Willy Wonka, Rube Goldberg. I used to read the comics when I was a kid. These are some that I've done uh, during the uh, our lockdown here in the COVID. I've built uh, actually... That's one good thing from this whole thing is I've been sort of spending more time on my art. So I built about four in the last six months. This is one I finished a couple of months ago. It's called Robot Man and Love. And for that one I missed in the beginning, some people asked the name is Bill Sandell, William Sandell. Yeah. So, you know, I live here by myself, but... Uh, you know, I have a UFO collection and my Bigfoot collection, and pretty much uh, just can do whatever I want in here. <laughs> I don't have anybody telling me, don't put the Bigfoot collection out anymore. Got all my books, all my, I have a big paranormal collection, probably the biggest private collection around LA. That's all those books in the back. These are all my art books, some black magic books here. I'm a, I'm a postcard designer for uh, Bombay Beach down by the Salton Sea. So I'm making postcards for the little town. A lot of big art movement down there in Bombay Beach. A lot of heavy hitters have moved down there, buying trailers. I bought a trailer. I do the House of Dots videos for my friend Dot. Down in Flap City. Some of the films that I've design. Hocus Pocus is out right now. I designed Hocus Pocus, so everybody loves that at Halloween. I usually have the book here, but it's down at the Sugarman Gallery in South Pasadena right now. A lot of my Hocus Pocus stuff. Yeah, your Halloween display for everyone in Lincoln Heights to see. Oh yeah, it looks so great at night. It's all orange and fiery. and It's great to have a window right off Main Street to do something like this. So these are all like, I mean, I think this, this one, uh, here's Little Hand, Big Hand, that's my clock. This I built, this is one of the only old ones. So I sold about 40, 50 back in my early 20s through a gallery down on La Cienega. This is the only one I have left. They were quite big, the ones I built. I built this one in the middle 70s, so. It's now it's still, still going strong. I built it as an antique, and now it still is, and now it really is an antique. <laughs> Gotten some great compliments coming in about your stuff. So, well, let me show you. Now, I, I do all these weird, um, uh, um, you know, kind of carny Rube Goldberg type things, but I do do practical sculptures that could be in any household. I want to show you just a couple of those. This one is. This one is for, um, like you would put this by the door, and everybody's so busy these days. This is an automatic uh, rabbit's foot rubber. 
so <laughs> you can save you a few steps in the morning. You got tiny hands that'll rub the um, the rabbit's foot for you, so it's pretty much good luck, you know, for the rest of the, the whole day. day. So that's a that'd be a handy thing to have by the door. All right. And I'll show you my. This is another handy. Quite the comic book collection here on the wall. I have about five or six thousand. Jeez. You know, this is for drinkers. You know, you you always want to know uh, what day it is, so you move your mark here. And when you try to get some structure into your drinking, so you maybe pick here's Corona. Let's say you pick Corona for the weekend, and you just drink Corona. <laughs> you do a little structure, but you always have to remember the liver. Always. That's remember. smart. All right, this is an amazing trip in here again, everyone. When we're back with the regular live art walks, you can come visit William. I mean, he does. You do this every art walk. I've been in your place several times. I mean, it's always amazing. It's always quite the view of cool stuff. I'm going to spin back around here, see if I get my camera to turn around with me. There we go. All right. Thanks again, William. Thanks. Bill Sandell, everyone. Let me zoom in here so you guys can see it. And remember, all these websites, all this stuff's up on our website. Good seeing you. See ya. Bark at me, cats can't stop rubbing against me. The two might be connected, maybe because the cats all rub against me, the dogs want to attack me because it seems to keep right, happening. Come, come back here for a minute. Okay, going back to the front. We're going here. Okay, and introduce Still. yourself. Oh, hi, I'm Bianca Dorso. Okay, we're going back down the stairs. Who has the best studio here? <laughs> there we go. Some old black right. and white. Yeah, you got me going. <laughs> you got to turn that off. Every, everyone here with their audio, uh, they got their stuff going and it inter everyone's got to turn it off. There we go. We off? Yeah. It makes us stream better too if you don't have things running in the back. I'm going to stand behind you. Oh, you don't want to be on camera? No. All right. So tell, the, tell us about what you do. This is a new series that I started when we were locked down my dog of 14 years died <clears throat> and this was my this was the result the result or how i felt after she died it was a great dance and stomp and you know if you're a photographer to make pictures makes me feel better so it was helpful, it was helpful. This is a one of a series of old signage. I have a number of them, that's my favorite. So I keep it up. Keep going, sorry. Highway 395. And I guess the red is, you know, is a spiritual something about how I feel about that part of the country. It's just beautiful, it's so beautiful. That's my granddaughter when she was little. That's that. I'll just leave it as is. Yeah, and then here we might as well add this one too. <laughs> Um, your lovely view out your window. Yes, except you can't see the mountains today. Yeah, it is very cloudy today. Rare for LA. We got yeah. the LA bomb squad across the street. The, street. the LA police decided to stick their bomb squad across from the brewery for good reasons because we're all crazy around here and who knows what's going to happen. But so. it also gives you a really false <laughs> sense of security. It really does. 
<laughs> you know, and at night, there's sometimes, because I sleep upstairs, um, they go out or they come in and they don't go with sirens. <laughs> Most times they don't go with sirens and they certainly don't come back, but they're blue and red lights. Ah, so you get a light boss, show. Yes, I do. Bomb squad light show. Bomb squad light show. More signage with IHOP. Somebody took me to lunch at the there for my birthday. Sky. Think and then come this way. And I'm starting an old these are old black and white photos of mine. And I think I'm going to do a series on hands because they're good. Because they're good. Because what would we do without them? This is a mock up of a new piece. I wanted to see what it would look like before I send it to the printer. And this is my tribute to Rothko. I can see my own reflection in it. Yeah. Museum glass for me is prohibitive. <laughs> Dan Flavin, a tribute to Dan Flavin. Little, little, you know, more of that. What else is in here? Let's go this way. I love that. I don't know why, but I do. Mountains, I guess. How's it been for you today? Oh, well, you know, this is my second, and I got two more tomorrow, so I'm, gonna be, I'm glad I've been uh, exercising lately. There's a I lot of stairs in that I 600 saw building. You going up those stairs. <laughs> and I have to run from Wi Fi to Wi Fi repeater, so. <laughs> God, it hey, really it's all right. something. It's, it's fun, it's an adventure. It's something. I saw, you know, the two that. Before you took a break, the two that I saw that really worked well sound wise and visually were Bruce. Bruce and Josh? And no, Kevin's wife. Oh, okay. Those were the two you heard very clearly. Okay. And you could see. All right. So that's what else do you need to know? That is it. I mean, that's it. wave goodbye to the camera. And remember, the, this is these people's like lives. So I always try to emphasize it's not just a gallery. This is this is your whole this life is here. It's your home. home. I live up there. You want to look up there? Uh, we can glance up there real quick. I don't, you know, I don't like to intrude if people don't want me to, but I, I'll peek up there. This, do you want this cart? I, uh, whoa, I have to throw it away. Nope, I'm good. I don't need any carts, I don't think. This is a lot of... Actually, you know what? I totally will come back and get that cart. Okay. Someone I, else I know needs it's that cart. It's not good. No, I know someone else who could totally use that. Good. That's funny. They just asked me if I had a cart. <laughs> and I was like, I don't have any carts. But... So this wow, is... Wow, your place looks so homey and... And that closes, but my air conditioner's back there. I love how homey everything here looks. See, that's what... Sometimes I try to, like, this is a concrete box again. Remember I said that, I mentioned that Bruce Dean's place, how we live in concrete boxes. That's what we live in. But yeah. you can still make it look like this beauty, yeah, tin roof. Look at that. That's just no a tin heat. roof. No heat. Concrete box, but they're no so beautiful heart. and they're so, like, homey and Home, yeah. they feel so part of each artist. I love that. It's such a good, you know, it's a great place to live. It's the world's largest art colony, so you're here with 550 other artists. 549, because you're the 550th. But Is that really it? It's 550, live and work. I thought there were three. Well, there's 330 spaces here. so Some places have two people, some have 10 people. Oh, God. Me and you, we have one person. We're smart. We don't, we don't. But and Bill Sandel, I go to a few other places. Go to a few other places, and there are like 10 people living in them. No. Yeah, Theory Labs. I think they got about ten. Well, they in there. have a huge space. Still, that's a that's a that's a yeah. army of artists they got over there. I'm content to live alone and look at you, cute little girl. I'm not only content. It's look a at must. you. You're so cute. It's a must. All right. Well, thank you again for letting us stop into your life. Thank you very much. Walk through your kitchen here. Look at all this. Can you see it? Yeah. Yes, you can. Look, I am one person. What is this? What is this? That is that is a lot of dishes for one person. One person. You're set. You don't ever have to do dishes. Basically, you can just just use a new plate every day. See.
Thank you again. It was lovely. All right, there we go. All right, thank you. See you uh, tomorrow, probably. All right, I'm going to head to the stairs here. Now, folks, I might lose connection again. So I can get to Cinda's Wi-Fi. I've got so many Wi-Fi's in here. All right, folks, I think I'm still connected. I'm probably going to lose connection here in a sec until I get Cinda's. Let me get a zoom in on your name here, and let me plug my little portable power box in real quick. Sorry, everyone's going to shake real quick. There we go. I was about to run out of battery. We're burning so much juice here. All right. Hi, buddy. Come on in. All right. All right. You lead. I'm following. from the last, I think, couple of years. I've never, ever been uh, this prolific or kind of in the flow more. It's been so, incredible. Why don't you tell us what you do? You're an oil painter, I'm, right? I'm an oil painter using um, really old-fashioned techniques that's involving underpainting and glazes. And what gives my work that kind of pop of color that it's got. Um, I'm painting, I paint the things, you know, whatever's around me at the time, like most of these young people, including the guy down here in the middle row, is a student of mine. I have a painting atelier here where I take on private students, um, right here, right where I'm sitting. And um, So he was a student of yours and a model? Well, he's, he's a student that I asked to be a model. Everybody should get painted at least once, I think, Kevin. <laughs> But um, he was so different. Um, I was here in L.A. in the 80s, and I left for 25 years raising kids up in the boonies. And I, um, I raised two boys, so I was really sensitive to the issues that they had growing up. Like, you couldn't cry if you were over six years old up there. And, and boys were um, trained to be boys. And then I came back here 25 years later, and I meet this incredible kid that um, is strongly masculine and strongly feminine at the same time. It's like maybe the best of both worlds, is if we can be it all at once. Got a question coming in. Do you do any online teaching? Uh, not yet? Not yet. Haven't, haven't, hit that, haven't hit that yet. Well, here's the deal. Because it's private teaching, I take on people one-on-one. -on -one. We wear our masks, and there's good ventilation in here, and we stay six feet apart. So I have been conducting classes safely. Okay. So no online teaching yet, but maybe in the future. Oh, All right. dude, I am almost computer illiterate, but, <laughs> but if it's got to be done, I may have to do it. So maybe, maybe. Let's get in close so you all can see the details on these characters. The one you're looking at right now, that's called The Magician and the Muse. And I think most people look at it and see, think that the guy's the magician and the woman's the muse. It's the opposite. Opposite way on that one? The guy is the muse and the woman is me. Um... I painted myself as a 20-year-old. <laughs> that's how magic I am. <laughs> but that's also a painting student of mine from, like, private uh, classes. Beautiful work. So um, vivid and colorful. I've had the best time, bro. Oh, and I should point out, since you're, you're before Cookie this time, no one else has seen it yet, look what she's got right here in her studio. Oh, a swing. So in case, you know, you're, you just need to take a break from your day, you can uh, go for a swing on the swing. It's good for deciding mm -hmm. stuff. You swing, and um, it's like taking a long drive or something. I, I it agree. Puts you in, it puts you in the zone. I have a swing in my garden. I do that all the time. I just sit out there for a bit, and you 
It's relaxing. Got a real cool place, Kevin. Yeah, but I mean, you, I, I don't have a swing. I do have a hoist. I could probably attach a swing to it. But and you have like a slide or a pole? With I've got all kinds of crazy stuff, but yeah, you got I don't get to visit my own place. You don't? No, we're not, I'm not on the tour. I'm too busy giving the tours. Yeah, I see that. I mean, and look at, let me go peek over at all your works, your space here, all your, look at these brushes. I love this. I cannot throw away a brush for my life. I don't know what my problem is, but there's like 90% crappy brushes. I have to search for good brushes. I love looking at artist palettes and paint. Yeah, it's, it's a little chaotic. I like to see. I don't have to say. I don't want to guess comes to order. I but, love um, it though. I love how the tape. Everything's got paint on it. I mean, everything. The fans got paint. The chair. You've got paint on you. Every furniture has paint on. It. Yeah, I know. I know that's awesome though. I think. <laughs> well, thank you for. I love that actually. That makes it feel real to me. I mean, if it was just a sterile gallery, who wants to be that? You are. You literally. There's. I mean, even the, like the leather couch has pink paint on it. That's perfect. Oh, yeah, that's off my butt. Everything yeah, over here. I sit in it all the time. Hey, Kevin, you should show the pants that are right outside. Oh, yeah, we'll stop on the way out. Somebody out. sat on the, a pallet in one of my classes. You don't sit on your pallet, gang. And thanks for coming. I miss everybody a lot. Let's see. Oops. You know that joke about artists that it's three pictures, it shows an artist working, an artist working, and the third photo is the same thing, uh, an artist working. And um, the first one's called before the pandemic, the second one's called during the pandemic, and the third one's called after the pandemic. So basically just kind of drives home the point, this is what we do, this is what painters do. I'm, it's not a balanced life for anybody, but for right now. It's my, about as good as it can get for me. My gimbal just cut out, so anyone saw some crazy camera, MTV yeah, I, camera. I was, I was wondering about that. My, my, my gimbal decided to go crazy on me right there. All right. See if I can get him to go uncrazy again. I didn't know they made them for that. Yeah, I got I to gotta get it back in order here. We're going to look at our ceiling for a minute while my gimbal tries to work again. There we go. <laughs> it's the added weight of the... Uh, charging cord I have on it yeah, for some reason that yeah it can't deal with the added weight all right, all right. thanks so much again I'm gonna just manually take over to wave goodbye thank you my friends all See right you, hopefully in the flesh one day hopefully next art walk oh I love I forgot about your little breakfast nook here I love your breakfast oh, nook man, yeah, it's been a lot of happy hours there and look there's cake it's like you're in a diner I love it. Stuff. You do? I didn't even see that. The straw carrier holder. Oh, so awesome. Take care, darling. Here's your little kitchen. The kitchen isn't clean. Go, uh, go, it's, a, go. it's all right. I like to see how people live. You got to open the door for me. I'm only one handed at the all moment. All right, gang. Thanks for all right. coming. Bye. I'm going to show your pants out here. Oh, they're right here. Here's, here's her lesson in watching where you're sitting down. She sat on her own pallet. Kevin, you might want to point out the cockroach in the display down by the. Oh, no. We'll pass on the cockroach. Thank you. Bye-bye. All right. All right. Where are we at now? All right. I'm going to have to go manual here for a little bit to plug in because my gimbal doesn't like my power cord plugged in. Apparently that extra little weight of a power cord is too much. Let me uh, hold on, folks. Let me switch to the new wire signal. Some artists with some interesting Wi Fi connections around here. All right, we're going to try to make do. There we go, it connected again. Welcome. All right. Hello, hello. Hello. I'm back again. Oh, you've got to turn off your thing going. Uh -huh. Everyone, every time I come in, they're watching the video themselves, and then they're got their Thanks music blasting. I have, and... I have wine and water for you. Oh, you thank you. I, is this water? Yeah. I will really, take a little water. It's very good water as well. I'm going to take a little because I am very thirsty. I'm dying right now. All right. I, I'm sure you are. Tell us about you and what you're doing here. Well, 
Well, um, so this first we're going to do Raphael. Right? We're doing Raphael first. All right. This is uh, this is the gentleman right here. I um, he doesn't smoke any. He doesn't uh, he doesn't smoke anymore. FYI. <laughs> so we have to do redo his photograph. Um, so I'm tell us about Raphael's stuff. Unfortunately, he didn't make it here today, so I'm going to be. Uh, I've been presenting his stuff for about two years. All right. Already, and um, I'm very excited because I now have his sculptures as well as his etchings. He's um, very prolific. He's done probably uh, he's published three books of etchings called Inkings, Inkings Two, and Inkings Three, and uh, and a book of also a book of poetry, and. So I've had these lovely issues here. And now uh, we have sculptures. He's done a, nearly 200 sculptures. I have 30 of them here, which I think they're all very delightful. So his Raphael's father was the very famous, legendary, surreal film director, Louis Lemar, that a lot of people these days are quite too young to know about, I can see. But if you, any film student will always study with uh, doing well because he did a very uh, interesting experimental short film with Salvador Dali in the, in the 1940s. And so, uh, as you can see, Raphael's work takes after his father, very surreal, and, and with a lovely humorous twist. So, he's done sculptures in bronze, wood, alabaster, marble. This is his animal collection. I'll, actually, I'll open the, you might see it better if I open the shelf and they, they move very nicely and uh, this one I want to show you how this one moves it's quite lovely it has this turtle has two heads and it's beautifully made it took him um, 500 hours to make this a lot of hours so um, he's put a, you know, many years of work into his his art which I think is delightful um, this one's interesting. This is one of the little ones in his book. And um, a, f a mutual friend of ours took the photograph. Uh, one of my friends suggest suggested that uh, um, our mutual friend take this photograph. So kind of like that it's life imitating art, as you like to say that. And, <laughs> and of course, my swing that I love so much. We just saw Cinda's swing a minute ago. Yours is twice the size yeah, at least. Yeah. I don't know. She's. I know she's had it for a while, but yours is much bigger swing. So I, I find it's very. Um, it's actually very cooling in hot weather. With the disco balls up above. <laughs> yeah, enough, enough swinging. Enough around. playing around. Um, here's some more of his wonderful etchings. So. They all have a nice humorous twist. All right. This one, all them diving into a cup. Over here. <laughs> That's called climbing up, climbing down. So, and I really love this one. He did this in uh, Madrid, and I, and that that sculpture doesn't go with it. I just think they look rather good together. Of course, here's your slide to get out of bed. Yeah, yeah. We'll we'll discuss that later. <laughs> um, and some more of his lovely sculptures and an etching. So when I moved in here, this this structure was not here. I needed storage. So I built a, um, a friend of mine helped me build a storage and it, it was square and it looked very hideous and I decided to curve it off, which I'm very happy with and it's great for hanging art on. The only thing, my friend said there was no way it could be done, but we, we did it anyway and I'm very happy with it. And uh, I forgot what I was going to say about that. Anyway, never mind. So that's my storage come gallery space. More of the oh, I wanted to mention this one here. So this this one here, there is an eight uh, 
this is a mini me that there's, there's another one that's exactly the same but it's eight feet high so that's the little version and, you have the giant version too yes and it's very magnificent and i would have loved to have had it here but it would have was a little bit of a mm -hmm. headache too to grab it kind of wanted to have it right here in the center maybe next time next art walk oh and um, also next time i'm going to have um his his father's movies playing so we'll have that next time too. so uh watch this space people um Oh, I even have I even have uh, his artwork in the bathroom. <laughs> Don't worry about the guy here. <laughs> See, his artwork is in the bathroom. It's immersive. Check that one out. <laughs> that one's called Safe Harbor. Uh, oh, and oh, I meant to say that. So, how I know Raphael is because I met him through a mutual friend about three, four years ago, and um, we got to know each other gradually, and then he he, he asked me if I wanted to, he, he liked, well, he, he used to take me out for lunch, but, but once every couple of months, and we got to know each other over about a course of a year, and I would always um, thank him by email, and he liked the way I wrote, so he asked me if I would like to write with him, uh, write screenplays with him, because that's another thing that he does, he writes He's written uh, 40 screenplays and plays. Wow. And he has, he has, uh, he used to have a, a, a theater in New York for about three years that he staged all his plays and screenplays. And so uh, he offered me a job writing with him, which was great. And so we've written one screenplay and we're on our second one at the moment. Great. Yeah. So all he's right. still very prolific, even at the age of 80. So, yeah. All right. So now we're going to go on to your art? Yes. All right, I've got to do a little wackiness with my gimbal here. Oh, yeah. Give me a sec. I'll plug in a different power source. All these towards all day, my, my phone is uh, hitting its limits. Yeah, yeah. All right, there we go. Oops, now we're sideways, so let's fix that. There we go. All right, back in business. All right, so um, my name is Stephanie Vosper, and um, otherwise known, AKA Cookie, <laughs> to note your son. And let me start here. This, I think this is fabulous. This is um, my friend, uh, our mutual friend, Gilbert Ortiz, took this, uh, did this terrific version of the Mona Lisa, which is actually Steph Lisa, because it's actually got my face in it. <laughs> and I've got that on my website, which is called um, megatrophywife.com. And <laughs> this is because I am the mega trophy wife. <laughs> All right, let's show why you're the trophy wife. I know it sounds a little bit conceited. But let's show why very, you're the trophy it's all wife. very tongue in cheek. Uh, I'm the trophy wife because I take people's trophies and that have been gathering dust on the shelves for years and I'll turn them into something like this. Um, I just have a lot of fun with it. Um, I love the little action figures. And it's just, it's really fun to work with them. This was commissioned by a tennis pro. So I went, to, I pick up these trophies from all over the place. And I, I often, people often just give them away on Craigslist. So I went to, to uh, West Hollywood to pick up some tennis trophies. This, this guy didn't want these anymore. He told me his wife just can't stand them. <laughs> so he gave me these trophies right here. And then I showed him what I did. Well, as an afterthought, I showed him what I did with it. And the next day he texted me and he said, would you, if I gave you my four favorite trophies, could you make something out of it? And I was, I said, I'd be delighted to. So he gave me this, this silver plate, this glass thing here, this and that. And I, um, and, and this amazing, what the most unusual thing about this whole thing is, that this dude here, which I found in a trophy shop, looks exactly like the guy who commissioned it. It's um, come around here to get a photo. So that is a, is a doppelganger of the dude that commissioned this piece. That's pretty awesome. Isn't that funny? So he's, he's, he hasn't picked it up yet. Well, he let me, kindly let me keep it for art walk and then he'll pick it. So there's that one. And, um, yeah, it's not a and we have my motorcycle mania, as I call it. And uh, the story behind this one, I'll try to be brief. Uh, the story behind this one, I 
picked up some trophies, old school trophies, old metal ones in Orange County. And I picked up, ooh, good, at least 15 of them. Great big stands and everything. And I really only wanted these beautiful angels of victory. And so the, the guy that, that sold them to me very reasonably took all these motorcycle things off and he had them on his table and I left. And then the, I had all these trophy parts sitting around for a couple of months and I thought, I didn't feel very inspired. I didn't know what I was going to do with them. But the only thing I could think that I had an inspiration to make something with the pieces that I left behind, the motorcycle pieces. So uh, I, I texted him and I said, can I, can I pick up those motorcycle pieces? And he said, sure. So I went back all the way back down to Huntington Beach, picked up the motorcycle pieces, and, and I'm kind of happy with how that came out. And this is my, I'll, I'll show you my other wheel. Of, this is one wheel of futility. As I like to call it, because they're all going around not getting anywhere. <laughs> all different sports. Yes, all different sports. Yes, some are some are metal, some are plastic, so it's not very well uh, evenly balanced. I have to figure out. I've I bought some magnets to try to make that evenly balanced. Figure that one out as we go. Um, so here we have. Uh, well, let's come to the second wheel of utility, and then we'll do the other two. The last two. This is the second wheel of futility. Well, this is actually the first wheel of futility that I made. So this one, so as it's supposed to wheel, work like a wheel of fortune, but as you can see, it doesn't really. <laughs> uh, anyway, so that's, see how it's a little bit uneven. Anyway. But it's all lots of fun anyway. Right. And I think this, this one doesn't actually spin. So these two pieces I found in the street, Unbelievably disgusting, filthy, and stinky. They smell. They actually reek of urine. Simply. And but I thought I can do something with them. So I saw some some homeless dude, right? And I, I bought them off of for five bucks. <laughs> and and I got them. I, I picked them up very gingerly. This is really gross. I got them home. I doused them. The first thing I did, I doused them in alcohol. Then I washed, scrubbed them with a toothbrush with soap. And then I spray them with a high pressure hose. And after all that, the electric still worked. I mean, I couldn't believe it. So I was very happy uh, that the electrics worked. So I made a chandelier out of one of them. It's called Evolution Chandelier. Because they start off a little and they get bigger. And this one actually spins. Yeah, and that one, I. Um, I, I was twisting the middle, and something happened. And the, it, it, it used to work, but the stop But that was that doesn't matter because I really wanted this beauty here, and I wouldn't have been able to have her if I had made a, another light out of it. So I'm very happy with that too. That's my triple layer cake. I think I call it. Cool. <laughs> so yeah, so uh, that's it for now. I also make other things. Like I, I sold a couple of these violins that I, I like to say, ruined violins. <laughs> but um, I'm, this is a, I haven't finished this one yet. Um, but I did sell a couple, so I was pleased about that. And um, that's it, folks. Thank you for letting us stop oh, in and see your world. One oh. More thing. oh, one more thing. Remember those Britney Spears bulls? Uh -huh. Britney Spears, Britney Spears bulls. Well, some of them ended up on my fridge. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, I really like decorating. Um, spaces. How'd you cut those all in half? That must have taken you a while. Uh, well, I was going to do a wall with them. I'm really glad I didn't. That's what you do with a ball pit when you are done with the ball pits from the yeah, ball pit. Exactly, yeah. All right. Thanks so much, Cookie. You're welcome. I'm glad you could show us your guys' space and your guys' stuff. I loved it. Megatrophywife.com. And megatrophywife.com. Remember, go to the brewery website too, and you'll see all their uh, website information. So, again, we have Raphael and we have Stephanie. Awesome. Thank you so much. Bye. All right, folks, we'll probably lose Wi-Fi again here in these concrete boxes. Say goodbye to the atrium. We're walking through the hallways here of the old brewery. The floors are always amazing. There are all these old concrete and so many interesting old little
There's Wi-Fi. Hey Kevin, hey, hi, welcome back. Uh, again, this is... It's a whole new Magda. group, so start again fresh. Magda Autofred, um, welcome to Magda Autofred Studio. And for the people that have been here for the first time, you know, welcome to the ones that you actually join us again. A big cup. And, uh, well, welcome in. Um, this is my friend Ashley, who came over to us to help me out every time in our walk. And this is actually the first room of my studio that I use, uh, you know, to welcome people, but also to do the framing and the business here. Um, and this are, you know, every single wall of my studio I use it as a showroom. So, come on in. And make sure you talk real loud. And this is actually my living room. Uh, when I moved into the brewery, this used to be a photo lab. So it didn't look like this at all, especially in the back side of the studio. Uh, it was really, really dark. So I had to open some windows and, you know, change a lot of the lighting and you know, just make it more comfortable for me. And, you know, I work and live in my studio and I really like it. Long time ago, I was having a studio somewhere else in my, you know, living a space somewhere else, but I was working late hours and I found myself losing, you know, track of my driving at night on the freeway, so I, that really scares me a lot. And I said, there's no way that I can have two separate places. So, uh, so if I'm working until like two, three in the morning, I just go upstairs, you know, relax right there. And I don't have to, you know, again, pay to rent, but also the safety of, you know, working late and just you know, get right at your place. Um, I set up my studio in such a way that if I'm doing uh, painting on, the, on, the, on that room, in the living room, or if I'm doing um, pre-making right here, I have my press right there on the right, and you know my ceramic area is actually on the other side, and my dining room on the other side also on the left. So I kind of set out sort of like a small, you know, uh, walls uh, you make to divide the space and don't feel so overwhelmed, you know, to work on the on just one big spot with everything around making a mess. Um, I usually put wheels on my table so I can move them around and stuff like that. This is actually some of um, my line of books. I love working on different techniques. I work with uh, pre-making, I work with clay, I work with painting. And for example, with pre-making, I need to be very precise and taking my time making, you know, the lines on the cart and everything, because if, if I carve too much, then it will be impossible to put the material back. With the painting, I do have to be more expressive because I have very short time to do the, the work on paper in terms of pre-making. With painting, I have no problem. You know, I switch already from oils to acrylics for, you know, the environment situation but uh but this is what i do you know i work on the ceramics also and the way i see it is actually like an extension of my paintings i love to do sections and divide the spaces and use like really bright colors so many times this is actually uh, this could be actually a painting you know like this it's actually yeah it goes like this um, then I can put this one, it could be one panel, two panels, or three panels, just for a painting, or this piece right here. But also, loving the clay and loving the, the material, what I decide to do is actually do a continuation of my designs in, in such a way that this could be um, a square base, for example. Or this one, like, let me see, this is, oh, this is a triangle piece, for example. So when you put it together, it kind of makes sense. It's like one of my paintings again. It's just a continuation of all the, the, the design. And that's exactly what I try to do with that. Or, or even this one, this piece that I still have to fire. 
you know, for the longest time I was doing graphic design and um, and I got some of the typos to emboss on the on the clay with my initials. Um, so I I love the sections, I love bright colors, but by by using the strength of the color and dividing, that's when you can find an equilibrium on the work. Instead of making something that is like super heavy, so that's something that I like. And for example, this piece I could easily divide it in three and just turn it into a ceramic. So for me, it's a continuation of that. Now I like I like design, like you know, um, right here on the left, we have a lot of the you know etchings in a lithograph. This is a lithograph that I was made in Scotland. I was, uh, you know, invited to be part of uh, an uh, exchange between Los Angeles and Scotland several years ago, and that's the result of it. But for example, like like you can see right here, for all the cups, everything that is is white on the paper, it means that I carve from the material. So on the way to finish a piece, I have to do several stages in order to know how much I am taking. And if I should stop at the moment, if I like the texture right here, or I should I want to clean really well. So that's that's part of the process. And I love that. You know, working on different techniques, I to me is refreshing. Um, I don't I don't get bored, you know, you don't have a chance to get bored. When you're working for a gallery or a particular show, you have to work in terms of that particular team. But at my studio, I have the freedom to work on whatever I please, uh, from, to jump from uh, pre-making to ceramics, to painting and drawing. Uh, so it just, for me, it's a way to keep your work very refreshing. Um, I have several pieces all also hanging all over the studio that I'm still working on. Uh, but it just, again, it, to me, artwork is an excuse to do whatever I please, to play with color, to, to play with form, to... Uh, also, when people ask me, like, what inspired me, um, it's pretty much everything. Even in our world, you know, uh, we have, like, in the past, up to eight, ten thousand 10,000 people going through the whole complex, which is amazing. Uh, but that's actually that human connection that that is really lovely, you know, that, that you...
All right, folks. Thanks for that huge delay. I'm so sorry about that. We had a defective power, uh, our power battery. We plugged it in and it went fritzy on us right away. So we got a new power block. Hopefully this will get us through our last visit here. They were staying patient for us. Thank you guys for staying patient. We're here at the artery. We're going to head on in and see what we got going on here. Hey there, guys. Thanks for being patient. We still got about 30 people on at least, so you still got an audience. This is a concept piece. It's uh, based on it's, it's based on the concept of timeless reflective feminine beings derived from a complex form of time and space. It's felt they mean to advise us in our uncertain fate as a human race, and that love is a universal element. Uh, please enjoy. This is part of the production space. Hopefully the camera stays on for at least long enough. I got to hand hold it, but here we go. and tastes. We're simply here to facilitate production and, and support production culture. And sometimes we have to completely support the artists and sponsor them 100%. Other times we do what we can. But we certainly are mainly collaborators with artists, as artists. One of the unique spaces of the brewery here, tall ceiling. Yeah, this is the old Pasadena Urban Brewery. I think this was a refrigeration unit back in the day. Here we keep our color papers. You probably can't see the color, it's getting dark. Awesome. Well, thanks for having us in here. And again, uh, it's, let's zoom in on your sign again here. Now that everyone saw it. The artery. And there's the performers for today's piece and the people involved. Please check out artery.com for art to purchase or gifts. Awesome. Uh, right, cool support. space here real quick. All right. Thanks for having us. Thanks for being patient with our little power problems there. Our momentary problem is now solved, but you are our last stop, so I'm glad we got you in. I would have been very sad if we got all the way to the set, you know, second to last and lost it. So, so we will see you again uh, tomorrow, I assume. We will get rid of these technical difficulties. All right. Back out here in the world, folks. That concludes the uh, Brewery Art Walk Tour today, the virtual art tour. Uh, we're outside this giant building here. 
as you saw, we got to walk around all these different buildings, all these different cool spaces. 550 artists are here. It is about 17, 18 acres, 20 something buildings, including that one across the street, the late, the newest building in the brewery family right over there. So here I'm gonna back away a bit, give you guys one last view. Then I'm gonna say adieu. You guys have a great night, okay? And if you guys wanna see it again or the other tours, join us tomorrow. Uh, and we have the other tour that runs concurrently this with this one. So we have two separate routes running, one through the other half of the brewery. So you guys have a great night. Thanks for joining us.